Hi, tea timers. So today I'm drinking number 10. Um, it's that that's the black and green tea that's was like developed a hundred years ago. And I don't know why it's called number 10. I don't know that anybody does because the people who did it aren't here anymore. So anyway, but it's a black and green tea and with a little bit of cream. And you might notice I have a new mug. This is my daughter, Emily. It's one of the things she gave me. So you see the little footprint? This is what's so cool. So that's what you see, right? Oh, she's just got a little footprint. But the footprint is of the big reveal, a fox. That's what a fox's footprint looks. So if I'm tromping around and I see that footprint, I could be like, aha, a fox has been here. I've, I would put um, hand lotion on <laughs> right before I did this because, you know, I woke up, rolled out of bed, made some tea, put on some lotion because I'm crazy for hand lotion and chapstick. Gotta have it. <laughs> but um, I, I wasn't thinking clearly because it's made my hand a little bit slippery and I'm, I'm worried that this is going to go zoom out of my uh, out of my hand and skid on so you can see the white knuckles <laughs> to hold it. Mm, nice. Okay, so, um, oh, and I've also got, you notice, new PJs. Do, 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 do. This is from my friend Diana. Now, I don't know, I think I've mentioned her before. She's a tea timer. She's a tea timer in England, but not only is she a tea timer, she's also one of my dearest friends. I've known her since I was 28, so 32 years. She's my youngest boy, Will's godmother. And she's just been always such a blessing in my life. I just love her so much. Anyway, she sent me this. She knows me so well because it's super snuggly. They're super cozy. I don't know if you can, you can, you can't really tell how snuggly they are, but you could tell because I'm like, oh, super snuggly. And they've got little hearts all over them. And she did, she told me that was because, you know, I'm born on Valentine's Day. So, <laughs> so thank you, Diana. Um, let's see. So I, yeah, Christmas was, oh, that's cold. To get it sometimes I turn the heat down in in the nighttime so that you can sleep better but then in the morning sometimes when I get out to do these tea times the heat hasn't quite kicked in yet so um so snuggly snuggly okay let's see I'll answer some questions oh 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 before I forget my friend Christina Dodd remember she's the one who helped me title the runaway heiress she came up with the heiress and then we added the runaway uh, she's got a book out today. So um, happy book birthday, Christina. For Her book is called Wrong Alibi, and it takes place in Alaska, and it's a thriller. So um, hooray, happy book birthday. Um, let's see. Okay, so now answer some questions. SPJW, Merry Christmas, Meg. I'm a new tea timer. Hi, <laughs> welcome. Uh, had to go back to the beginning. I am now on episode 32, but wanted to watch this week's as close to real time as possible. Meg's Cozy Tea Times has become one of my favorite things in 2020. Aw, thank you so much. I'm so glad. Actually, these Cozy Tea Times has become one of my favorite things. Um, one of my favorite things during these times too. And, and it's, it's interesting because sometimes, you know, it, as we know, the, uh, well, I don't know why that's more okay than saying the shit hits the fan, but sometimes when it's the fan, it's like, oh, you just want to, something else happens and you just want to pull the covers over your head and, and just go back to sleep and not, like, not get up. But, you know, because I'm doing the tea times, I'm like, no, nope, you get up. And then I read through your comments so that I can, you know, put them down and, and do, and, uh, and it just lifts my heart. It just lifts my heart. So I'm so happy um, that that this offers um, comfort to you guys and and it really does to me as well. So it's, it's reciprocal, so thank you. Um, oh, oh, uh, there was an up, uh, update. You remember the guy who wrote in, William, who wrote in about doing his first turkey and being worried that he was gonna poison his partner? Well, he wrote and he said, hello, fellow tea timers and Ms. Tilly, should you see this? I just wanted to say, I followed the advice to the letter and I had the best 
turkey. It was succulent and delicious. I am so proud of myself, and you should be. <laughs> I, I put that in, that's not him. Um, thank you so much. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas, and I am off to make a turkey sandwich. Hooray! <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad it turned out, and thank you so much for letting us know. Um, yeah, turkey, you know, it seems so daunting. So many things seem so daunting, and then you do it, and you're like, oh, that oh okay and then once you do one thing then the next time you're going to tackle something you're like well gosh that seems so daunting and that turned out fine and then you do the next thing and sometimes they turn out and sometimes they don't and it doesn't really matter what matters is like i've always felt um when ever since i i read a um card when i was 16 i was going to port angeles for a ballet camp and there was this card um and it, it was about this woman supposedly although then i find out later many years later that it wasn't that somebody wrote it and pretended it was like a woman in her 80s but it was about how if she had to live her life over again you know she would ha dance barefoot in the and she would you know not carry as many like her umbrella and her this and her that and I remember reading it and thinking oh oh and I thought I don't want to live my life always preparing for the worst disaster although <clears throat> anybody who knows me knows I do try I do prepare but I also think that it's really important to um to if there's something where you're like okay if I look back and I'm gonna have regrets then for me, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. So whether it's making that turkey or whether it was hopping on a bus, Greyhound bus, like I did, and going to New York to be a ballet dancer, I was terrified, but I did it. You know, I, I'm like, okay, so if there's something where I think I'm going to look back and I, I might regret it, then I do it. And each time I did something, then it kind of exercised that sort of take a chance muscle so that then, you know, when I look back, hopefully, you know, well, okay, everybody has regrets, but you try to, you try to make recompense, or I don't know how to pronounce that word, but you know what I mean, try to make amends for the things you did that were, that weren't your better self, and try to be your better self, and, or sometimes, be, not be, but forgive yourself for it. So, um, let's see, okay, so let's see, I don't know where I, how I got off on that tangent. Um, Ramon C. I am so happy to find this video. Uh, the movie, Leaving Normal, has been one of my, my all-time favorites. I'm so sorry it wasn't the best of experiences. Dear Meg, this channel is my new official favorite. I'm having such a difficult year, as many people are. Your storytelling is wonderful. It's an honor to follow your stories and have a cozy tea time. Gem and Singing Songs are two incredible books, and I just ordered your two newest. I'm excited to dive into them. Happy almost new year to you and your family. Aw, thank you so much, Ramon. And 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 I hear you. Uh, it, it has been a really difficult time. Um, like this year has been so challenging um, in, on so many different ways and in so many different levels. And um, I'm just really glad that this could be a cozy respite. And I just want to say, um, sometimes there's been times where things have been so dark and so bleak and, um, and where I thought I'd never climb out of the challenges, whether it be financial, emotional, heartbreak, worry uh, as a parent or, or as a, a family member. And, and the thing is, is not to lose, not to lose hope, is to just know that whatever hard times are happening for us all, this too will pass. And when I look back on some of my most challenging times, um, I see that they helped inform me for who I have become. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm so lucky that I'm in quarantine with my husband because sometimes um, I'll have a moment like um, when a, a dear friend and 
her family all came down with COVID. I, I was, um, I was undone for a few days, you know, um, you know, thankfully they're better. Um, but the, the worry, but then you try to find like, okay, you just, you, we can't spiral down into it because we'll drown. So, um, luckily my husband and I have taken turns. <laughs> so he's just gone through a period of, um, of, of, I think, you know, the thing is, is that I was like, oh, okay, okay this is coming. We got to prepare. We got to batten down the hatches. This is what we got to do. And, and I got things prepared and I this and I that, and, you know, just try and short up. But, you know, the, like the worry drove me. And then uh, but my husband's like, doink, doink, doink. Okay. So you want, we, we want to get this. Okay. We'll get that in place. Well, and he's just kind of going merrily along. And then it was like a little bit after the vaccinations had been discovered and this and that and the other, that all of a sudden it was like, it was like all of a sudden he woke up and he's like, like we've been doing this for, I don't know, 11 months now <laughs> or 10 months or whatever it was. He, he just like woke up and he's like, what the heck is happening to the world? And he just like freaked out. My poor guy. He was like, you know, he got him very shaky and he lost weight and he was so worried. And, you know, then it was my turn to shore him up. And, and I hope you have somebody in your life who can do that. And if they can't, then, 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 then I'm glad that things like you're finding things like this cozy tea time that can so you feel not so alone and you feel like a spark of hope and and things will i mean goodness like like seriously i i've had really seriously dark challenging times and when i look back um i realize that i wouldn't have made the next step or my life wouldn't have shifted this way or I wouldn't have found the resources or the strength to be who I am now. But it's hard. So sending love and, and I'm so glad that this is, um, this is helpful. Um, so let's see what else. Is there another one here? Oh, you know what? I wanted to, t I, I wanted to tell you about, um, about my, uh, uh, a cozy story about when I was uh, when I was younger. I remember once my my book. I put it in the end of Porcupine. My book Porcupine. But when I was um, little, I remember once I was um, in the kitchen doing dishes, and my little sister came in the breakfast dishes, and she was practically vibrating with excitement. And I'm like, "What? What's going on?" She goes, "Come with me." come with me. This is Becky. And I'm like, where? What? But she was so excited that I said, okay. So I got on my, my gumboots and, and, um, put on my jacket and followed her out. And I said, where are we going? She goes, it's a secret. She was so excited. She was practically dancing. And we went through the fields and over the fence. And we, there was a, uh, we, we were renting on a, pro well, we weren't renting. We got to stay there for free because my stepdad was renovating, uh, the guest house in, and uh, my, I remember my brother, Steve, who was 11, he was doing all the electric. So uh, I don't know, we helped do painting and putting on the ceilings. You know, they had the tiles where you, those white ones, you know, and, and doing things like that. But they had, they had Steve doing the electrics and he was 11 years old. Uh, yeah, 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 I, I'm so glad he didn't get electrocuted and I hope that house hasn't burnt down. <laughs> But anyway, that's what I was going to tell you. So we went over and so we, but it was like a thousand acres around this property. And um, we went to this old, there was this old abandoned uh, apple orchard. And the apples now, they weren't big apples because it had been, I guess it was so old or something. They were very small apples, but they still had good flavor. And um, oh, maybe I told you this story. Did I tell you this story? Well, well, I'm gonna tell you again, anyway, if you haven't. So anyway, so um, so she she said, gather apples, gather apples, and it was a misty day, a misty fall day, and there was a dew on there on the on the tall grass, and there was uh, it was it was just uh, so we gathered up a bunch of apples, and I said, this is enough. She goes, more and more. So we gathered this big pile of apples, and then she said, now we wait, and so we squatted down, we were hunkered down, and she said, you have to be really quiet. And so we were really quiet. And then all of a sudden, there was a movement in the bushes. And uh, 
It went rattle, rattle, rattle. I was like, Peggy, something's coming. Like, shh, shh, I know. And then a porcupine poked its head out of the bushes and came waddling towards us. And I was like, porcupine, Becky, porcupine. Ha, ah, ah, ha, because I was scared because our old dogs would get into the porcupines and they would come home like covered, like porcupine quills, you know, usually on the snout. But one of our old dogs, Russ, once he came and he had porcupine quills on his snout, on his body, on his, like on here, on his flank, like that porcupine must have leapt all over him. And he had to be taken to the vet because we couldn't even pull out the quills with the tweezers. So I was really, my heart's pounding. She goes, no, no, it's okay. And so she said, just stay. So we stayed quiet, hunkered down like two little wild creatures ourselves. And then the porcupine came over and then, um, and then Becky took one of the little apples in her hand and she held it out like this to the porcupine. And the porcupine waddled forward and then waddled back and then waddled forward a little bit more. Waddled back, because it wasn't used to me being there too. And the side looks at me and then it, waddled forward and it grabbed a little apple and it scampered back and it got on its hind legs and ate the apple just like a person went like that and then it threw away the core <laughs> like I didn't know that they didn't eat the core um but and so then Becky said okay your turn so I I got an, a little apple and I put it in my hand and I held it out as far as I could my heart's pounding because this is a dangerous porcupine who could put quills in me and it came forward slowly slowly and then it took the apple and went back and ate it on its back hind legs. And that porcupine ate apples over and over again, maybe, maybe, maybe 18, maybe 20 apples until its belly, because it was old, was all distended and kind of hanging down. And then, and then it shook its quills like this and came over and Becky said, now we get to pet it. And we petted the porcupine. And what you didn't know is porcupines, their quills are very sharp, but when they shake like that and they put their quills down, it's, they have all these little soft, fine furs and it's the softest fur you ever felt. And it felt like those, those, um, those, um, you know, the old fashioned where they had the bisque lady and then they had the powder puffs, the old fashioned lady powder puffs that were pink and that just felt so soft and fluffy. It felt like that, just like the softest thing you ever felt. And we petted this porcupine and we petted this porcupine and then finally it shook itself again and its quills all sprung up and then it waddled back across the orchard and disappeared into the bushes. So that really happened. So we petted a porcupine. So that's what I had at the end of my book, Porcupine. And I just, I just, um, and that was a time in my life that was really, really challenging. That was a time where really bad things were happening at home. And yet in, in when I think back on that time, yes, that's there, but, but also there's this beautiful note, like a pure note, like, you know, boy sopranos, uh, over a song of just this moment of absolute magic and joy. And I think that's what we need to do is find these moments. Now, I know we can't all go out petting porcupines, but find them in the little small things in life. Um, because um, whether it's just like looking down and noticing the, the beads of dew on grass or you know how the little drops hang on the bare branches of the trees when it's rained and the way they just kind of shimmer like diamonds. Um, those things just, we have to try to find those little things that can fill our hearts during these times. And this too, this too will pass. Okay, so lots of love everybody. See you soon.